Welcome to Learn and Fly Melbourne. I'm one of the instructors here and my name is Clement. Today we are going to talk about stalling. When we are talking about stalling, we are talking about the aerodynamic stall, not the engine stall. So what is exactly an aerodynamic stall? In short, an aerodynamic stall is when the aircraft's angle of attack exceeds the critical angle of attack, result in a reduction in lift and leads to a loss of height. Not only were I learning how to enter a store, but also the most crucial part of this exercise is to be able to get out of this undesired situation safely. Also, by practicing stores, we can develop a feeling of an aircraft is about to store, so we can avoid entering a store in the first place. In the first lesson, Effects of Control, we have covered that as the aircraft's angle of attack increases, the coefficient of lift will be increased to produce more lift. However, this is only true to an extent. For most general aviation aircraft, when the angle of attack is increased to 16 degrees, which is also known as the critical angle of attack, that is the peak of the coefficient of lift. If the angle of attack is increased beyond the critical angle, the coefficient of lift will be reduced rapidly, so as the lift being produced. Therefore, the aircraft will lose altitude rapidly, and that is how we know the aircraft has entered the stall. To understand how a stall occurs, firstly, we have to understand the relationship between aerofoil and airflow. When a wing is flying through the air, air will be flowing past the top and bottom of the aerofoil. Due to the skin fraction of the wing, the air immediately surrounding the aerofoil gets a reduction in speed. The air that is closest to the aerofoil suffers more from the skin fraction, therefore they are the slowest. On the other hand, the further away the air is from the aerofoil, the less skin fraction it receives so the faster the speed of the airflow. And the boundary of air that suffers from the reduction of airspeed, we call that part of the air the boundary layer. When the aerofoil is at a lower angle of attack, most of the air within the boundary layer will be flowing smoothly, and we call that part of the air the laminar boundary layer. When the air has now flowed towards the back portion of the aerofoil, due to the skin friction that has been imposed on the air from the beginning of the aerofoil, the speed of the airflow will be reduced significantly. Because of the additional reduction in speed, turbulence will be created within a boundary layer, and we call this the turbulent boundary layer. The position where the laminar boundary layer becomes a turbulent boundary layer is called the transition point. When the airflow transits from laminar to turbulent, it will maintain the flow and progress to the rear portion of the airfoil. And due to the force of skin friction, the airflow will slow down even more. When the speed of the airflow is slowed down to an extent, the airflow will separate from the top surface of the aerofoil. This phenomenon is called flow separation, and this position is called the separation point. When the airflow is detached from the aerofoil, that portion of the aerofoil will not be generating any lift. When the angle of attack increases, the area of laminar boundary layer reduces. Not only that, the laminar boundary layer will transit into turbulent boundary layer earlier. Because of that, the flow separation and separation point would occur at an earlier position, which would reduce the surface area of lift generation and move the center of pressure forward. When the angle of attack is increased to 16 degrees, the coefficient of lift will be the greatest. If the angle of attack continues to increase beyond the critical angle of attack, the coefficient of lift will be reduced rapidly, causing a stall to occur. Due to the excessive angle of attack, the laminar boundary layer and the turbulent boundary layer will only be attached on the top surface of the wing for a short period of time. Flow separation and separation point will occur at the leading edge, drastically reducing the lift production of the wing. Therefore, the aircraft will no longer be in equilibrium as the lift is less than weight, and there will be a rapid loss of altitude. Center of pressure will move back to allow the aircraft to pitch down, and that is the principle of stalling. We have learned that when the angle of attack exceeds the critical angle, the aircraft stalls. However, when we are approaching a stall, what are some of the symptoms that may allow us to recognize it and avoid entering the stall in the first place? The first symptom is regarding the aircraft's nose attitude. When getting close to the stall, the aircraft's nose attitude will get higher, so as the angle of attack. Because of the increasingly high nose attitude, the airspeed of the aircraft will be decreasing at a rapid rate, getting closer and closer to the stall speed. 
Due to the reduction in airspeed, the control effectiveness will be reduced. The control may feel lighter and sloppier than usual. The fourth symptom is the stall warning. It is an oral warning to warn the pilot that a stall is imminent. When a main wing is about to stall, a fair amount of turbulence will be created. And they will be trailing behind the wing and disturb the airflow on the elevator, causing vibrations on the elevator. This sensation will be transmitted from the elevator back to the control stick, and we call this the control buffet. Last but not least is the control stick position. As we are approaching the stall, the control stick will be aft, sometimes even fully aft. And those are the six symptoms regarding stalling. One of the biggest myths about stalling is when an aircraft stall, it will feel like free falling, but in fact, it doesn't. When an aircraft stalls, it will pitch down. Because the aircraft is now pitching down, the angle of attack is reduced. When the angle of attack is reduced below the critical angle, the aircraft will be unstalled. During this process, the aircraft will be losing altitude. And that's how we recognize a stall has occurred, by the sudden pitch down attitude. Before practicing stalls, there's a checklist to be completed prior to the first stall. This is called the Hassel Check. H-A-S-E-L-L -L. Height Airframe Security Engine Location Lookout Height We have to ensure the stall recovery is recovered by 3,000 feet above ground level. So 3,500 feet will be a normal starting point for stall practice. Airframe. We have to ensure that the fuselage and both our wings are in a normal condition. Also, raising or lowering flaps is required depending on which stall to be conducted. Security. Checking the hatch and harnesses have been locked properly and fastened securely. Also, if there is any heavy objects at the back, making sure they are stowed properly as well. Engine. Checking the engine oil temperature and pressure are in a green range. Location. Making sure during a stall practice, the aircraft will not be over populated area but over farmland and unpopulated area. Lookout. Before the first stall, a 360 degree medium level turn will be conducted to ensure our surrounding airspace will be clear of any other traffic before initiating the first stall. After completing the hassle check, We'll now look into the different types of stalls. There are two stalls that we need to practice. The first one is the clean idle stall. It means stall at idle power without any flaps. The second stall is the approach stall. It simulates the aircraft in the approach configurations, which means the aircraft will have landing flaps and a reduced power setting to perform a stall. After going through the theory behind a stall, it's now the time to put our theory into practice on our Diamond DA40. Before the start of the first door, we have to do the pre-maneuver check first to make sure everything is normal and ready to go. The pre-maneuver check is the hassle check, H, height. We have to recover by 3,000 feet. We're now at 5,500, so that's plenty. A airframe. We'll be doing a clean idle stall first, so no flaps. And also I can't see any defects on the airframe on the wings, so we can proceed with the first stall. Security, so securely stow heavy items at the rear if there is any, and also the hatch and harnesses are secured. Engine T's and P's are in the green. L is location to make sure we're over unpopulated area. I'll oh, initiate a left hand turn right center center left look for open area or farmland away from the city and build up area to conduct the store you can see there's open area in front of us uh, and we'll track over there to conduct stores because we are going there i will be bucking the heading buck here to start our 360 degree lookout i didn't see any plane so i will start to level off from my 360 degree turn and we can now start the first store and this is the pre maneuver checks. Before conducting a clean idle store, fuel pump on. When entering a store, maintain altitude 5,500 feet and also maintain heading at 100 degree. Then we can uh, start the first door, so power idle. After power idle, the first symptom is the speed is decreasing. Because the speed is decreasing, we have to raise the nose to maintain altitude. You can see the nose attitude is getting higher 
Also, the speed is dropping, and the third symptom is the control effectiveness is decreasing, and you will feel sloppy out. The fourth symptom is the stall warning. When the stall warning goes off, apply full pitch, and you can feel the airframe is buffeting. Lastly, it's the stall stick position. When the aircraft pitches down, that's how I know the aircraft is stored, which is now. Full power, release back pressure to about five fingers, and then slowly raise the nose to the best rate of climb attitude. Get back to the original altitude of 5,500 feet, and then resume normal cruise power setting. Also, when applying full power, the aircraft will try to yaw to the left. To maintain the heading of the aircraft, apply a fair bit of right rather than maintain the aircraft flying in a straight line. When arriving at 5,500 feet, resume normal power setting and trim, and that is a stall recovery. The next stall is the clean idle stall without power recovery. We'll have a look at how much height we'll lose compared to the last one. On the last stall with power recovery, we lost about 200 feet, so we'll have a look this time. Fuel pump on, traffic's all clear, over populated area. Same as before, power idle, speed is decreasing, nose is pitching up, control effectiveness is decreasing, airframe buffered, and store warning comes on anytime soon. Full pitch, and install stick position. This time we're not using power to recover, but only the release of back pressure. Store release back pressure to 5 fingers attitude to unstall the aircraft. You can see the height loss is more than the powered recovery. We lost about 300 feet. The use of power is just an aid to minimize height loss, but the release of back pressure is the most important to unstall the aircraft. After completing the store, we have to conduct a simplified hassle check, which is called hell check. Height, engine, location, lookout. Height 5,500 feet still. Engine, T's and P's in the green. Location, over populated area. Look out, this time we're not going to turn 360 degrees, but only 90 degrees. Between each store, we have to turn at least 90 degrees to make sure there are no traffic in the vicinity. After completing the hell check and everything checks out, then we can move on with the next store. The third store to demonstrate is the approach store. It is simulating the aircraft stored during the approach stage of the flight. First of all, fuel pump on, height 5,500 feet. Let's set heading to the westerly heading. Power, reduce power to the base power setting of 11 inches manifold pressure. Lower flap, speed below 108. Speed check, flap down for takeoff flap. Contract the balloon, push forward so the aircraft doesn't climb. Let the plane slow down. When it's slowed down to below 91 knot, lower landing flaps, speed check, flap down. We now start to see the six symptoms. Speed is decreasing, noise is getting higher and higher, effectiveness is decreasing, airframe buffered. When the stall warning goes off, apply full pitch. Last symptom is the stall stick position. You can start to feel the airframe buffered when it stalls, recover. Release back pressure, five fingers, full power. Un and unstall the aircraft, raise the nose. Dash on horizon. After the dash is on horizon, clean up the aircraft. Positive rate, flap up one stage. And check positive rate again, flap up the last stage. Trim. After getting back to 5,500 feet, level off, and this is a demonstration for approach stall. When practicing stalls, what are some of the threats and areas that we have to be aware of? A rapid loss of altitude will be one of the greatest threats when practicing stores. Because of that, before entering a store, we have to ensure the aircraft has enough altitude for a safe recovery. The method to manage this threat is by conducting a pre-store hassle check. The first hitch is regarding the height. To ensure we have sufficient height to be safely recovered by 3,000 feet above the ground level. The other aircraft with the vicinity is also a major threat for our normal flight training, especially during stalling practice. This is because during stalling practice, our visibility is significantly hindered. 
reducing the ability to cite other traffic. And that is also the reason why we are conducting the hassle check before our stalls. We'll be doing a 360 degree medium level turn prior to the first stall and at least a 90 degree medium level turn lookout in between each of the stalls. And that is it for today guys. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to our Learn to Fly YouTube channel for more great content. And please follow us on Facebook and Instagram. I'll see you guys on the next episode. Cheers. <laughs>